In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top five ways that you can improve your offense overnight in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they can possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna be utilizing the gun bunch to kind of illustrate these top five tips because it's the best offense of the entire game. And if you wanna get my entire gun bunch offensive guide, a step-by-step -step guide to uh, the offense that shares with you written setups, video breakdowns, and film study analysis, you can get that full guide in the description for just $15. We cover the trips tied in offset, the bunch tied in, and the bunch all into that one offensive guide. That come, brings me to my first point and my first tip for any offense in Madden 21, and it's that and that is to simplify your offense to basically do an 80-20 analysis. What an 80-20 analysis basically means is it means that 20% will oftentimes contribute to 80% of the results. And so there's it's very likely that there are 20% of the plays that you call currently in your offense that are contributing to 80% of your negative results, meaning that they're not. Uh, really performing well, but you call them because you want them to work or you like them or whatever you want to kind of make them work And what I want to tell you right now is the first step to being effective in Madden 21 is to eliminate the non-essential um, And so if you're if you find yourself calling plays just to call plays That is not an effective strategy and you want to cut that out as fast as possible You want to simplify you want to cut that off you want to eliminate those plays that are not uh, contributing to your offensive effectiveness. So for example, if I'm deciding that I wanna run the gun bunch, and then I just come down here to iForm Pro and decide I'm gonna run PAY post, it's not really what we're looking for. But what we wanna do is we wanna simplify our offense, and we also wanna ask that same question, of, of the 20% of the plays that have contributed to the most positive or the most successful experiences on the offensive side of the ball, what are those plays? And we wanna call those plays as much as possible those are the plays that we want to focus on so it's very typical that I can break those plays into about five uh, actual passing plays so from the gun bunch in my personal opinion the first play is the power play and that is the play flood it's the best play in the entire bunch in my personal opinion the second play is your counter play and that's the Jets dig it looks very similar to the play flood but it happens to go in a little bit of a different direction the third play is a constraint theory play. So that might be something like the play mesh. That might be something like the play smash return. Um, it, it, those are some of the plays that I would recommend in those situations. And then the last uh, kind of element or the last play, or, or I'm sorry, I apologize. The fourth play is a run play. So what's, what's, the, what's the number one run play that you have that you must make go, that you will make go, that you will run again and again and again? For me, that's the halfback base out of the gun bunch. And then I also have um, a red zone play. So for me, uh, I actually really, really value the ability to be able to score in the red zone. I put it, I value it so much that so I want to have a specific play that I can go to consistently in the red zone. So for the gun bunch, that is the mesh post. So I have constraint three play, which is the mesh play. I have a red zone play, which is mesh post. I have a running play, which is a base. I have a counter play, which is uh, jets dig. And then I'm actually going to come out in my uh, gun bunch flood play, which is my power play. So those are those are kind of the five keys um, to to your offense in, in terms of your play calling. Now, the, the, the kind of piggyback off that, I'm going to go jump into my second tip. And my second tip is to make every call that you make, make the play calls that you're going to make look identical. You want your plays to look identical. So, for example, um, I don't want to basic, like, one of the popular ways to run mesh posts is this right here. I'll show you. I'll show you real quick. This is a very, very popular way to run mesh post. So if I'm setting up mesh post, what I'll do is I'll put the R1 receiver on a slant, I'll put the square receiver on an out route, and I'll motion R1 to the left. Now this motion is very fast, but it's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway that I'm running mesh post. It's, it's very unlikely that I'm gonna run anything else. So what I want you to, what I wanna encourage you to do is as you're simplifying, you want to really try to identify, okay, I want to I want to only do a couple little things here, right? Now there may be a situation that I would categorize as a constraint theory where we want to do something like this, where we go to mesh and we want to motion the circle receiver to the outside. That's a little bit different. It's also a little bit faster and it's a little bit harder to adjust to. As you can see, the corner route gets open. 
But well, what I'm getting at here is you want to, as a general rule, make your calls look identical because you don't want your opponent to be able to identify what you're doing, okay? So if you're gonna motion the, the circle receiver to the right, motion them to the right 80% of the time. If you're going to motion the R1 receiver across, motion him across 80% of the time. That's kind of a little bit of a, a nuance that I'm trying to get at here. So um, the beauty of this is to play flood. You don't need to motion anybody. You literally just put the running back on option route and you snap the ball and you go. And as you can see right here, I mean, you just have reads for re like reads for days. And the beauty of Jets dig is let's say they go to cover three and I audible to Jets dig. Well, this thing's gonna kill cover three and I'll, I don't have to do anything and I don't have to motion anybody out. And as you can see here, and I got a little bit of a bad throw a little bit of a throw out a sack animation right there, but basically, you know, you're gonna be able to have a lot of success. You're gonna be able to get open, and I'll show you that one more time. Give myself a little bit more time here, but against any cover three in the entire game, if you call Jets Dig, Jets Dig is gonna give you a one play touchdown every single time. It's not it's not like a one time thing, it's like an every time thing. As you see right there, that R1, and I don't have to motion, but it looks exactly the same as Flood. Now, the beauty of this is you wanna do this across the board. So, for example, if I run the play mesh pose, I want to find a way to run that play where it can look exactly the same so it might look something like this right here it looks exactly the same now as the other plays do and as you can see right here you know we're still able to consistently hit the read another example maybe for the place uh, smash return which I didn't bring out here with me but if I brought the play smash return out you know it might look something like that and then as you can see right here now we're off and we're doing some things a little bit differently so that's what I'm kind of getting at as far as you want to make your calls look the same the third tip that I have for you is you want to read grass and you don't want to read people. So oftentimes what people will do is they'll look at the defender and they'll say, okay, does the defender guard him? And then they say no. And then by that time, the ball is like almost out of bounds. It, 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 it's way too long. It takes way too long. So what you want to do is you want to kind of decide pre-snap, where is the open grass? In this example, the open grass will be to the flat to the right. Is the grass still open after I snap the ball? The answer is yes. And so I throw the ball. You want to read grass, not people. You want to focus on trying to read space. I, I like to break the field down, and I try to literally just read the space on the field. If I can read the space of the field, I want to throw into open grass. That is kind of the principle of the air raid offense. Um, it's something that we've talked about a little bit here on the channel. We talked about it a lot in the beginning of the year. But basically, it just comes back to you want to get the ball into the open grass. So if you see a, if you see a uniform there, a jersey, you don't want to throw it, obviously. And so you want to train your eyes to look for open grass. The fourth thing that I have on the list of top five tips to improve your offense overnight is you want to take your checkdowns whenever necessary. In Madden 21, flat routes are super, super effective. Whether it be that flat route, whether it be the one from Jets Dig that you can basically just get out here and get a nice little quick throw in. Um, flat routes are very, very important and very, very effective. And you want to continue to take those. Another thing that you want to do is you want to kind of build in little um, things like this little motioned out hitch from Gun Bunch. You'll see that yellow zones can't really get out there to it. That's a check down. That's an example of a check down. You want to take those underneath routes whenever possible. And the reason why is because it's number one, it's going to keep your offense on schedule. But number two, and more importantly, um, this year's game, because of the way zone drops work, they can actually take away certain routes sometimes. So you want to always take up your checkdowns whenever necessary. And the last tip that I have for you, and this is one of the biggest reasons why Gun Bunch is super, super effective, is if I were to try to blitz here, if I try to blitz six people here, um, all I have to do from a Gun Bunch perspective is just block my running back or block my tight end. By just blocking one of those two people, I pick up the best blitz in the entire game. And as you can see, we're able to stay on schedule. The point here is simply this, to always, always, always have a formation where you can have solid pass protection, where you can have um, a running back or a tight end to be able to help you pick up the pressures. It will be worth its weight in gold. And that is one of the many reasons why the bunch, uh, the bunch offense has been the best offense for years. And so let me just kind of recap. The first thing we want to do is we want to simplify our offense. We want to stop doing the top 20% of plays that are contributing to our negative results. And we want to continue and do more of the 20% of plays that are contributing to 80% of our positive results. We want to focus in on having a power play, a counter play, a constraint theory play, a running play, and a red zone play. We want to make our calls look exactly the same. We want to read grass and we don't want to read individual defenders. We want to 
take our check downs when necessary. And lastly, we want to have some, some ability to be able to pick up all the pressure. The gun bunch checks all of the boxes on those. And if you want to get my entire gun bunch offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video for you to be able to get it. Thanks for watching.